When it comes to gaming, most gamers want a great TV that maximizes what their consoles can do. In today's tech video, we're going to do a gaming review of the Samsung S85D. Now, the couple of game systems, the consoles that I own here in my house is my son owns a uh, Nintendo Switch and then I own a PlayStation 4. So that's what we hooked up to this thing here. Um, I imagine there's probably not a whole lot of difference whenever you're hooking up like an Xbox or a PlayStation to this thing. But um, when I've hooked it up to here, it's like it enhanced my gaming experience because um, I usually play my PlayStation on a 43 inch Samsung TV. And when I hooked it up to the QLED, whoa, it was just like made it, the detail so much sharper, so much darker and, and lighter. It just really highlighted my gaming experience. Now, I'm more of a Call of Duty kind of fan uh, whenever I play games. And then I do play a little bit of NBA 2K. Um, but when I hooked it up to hit this TV here when I was playing Call of Duty, like along with my sound bar here, um, it was just like booming. I almost had I had to turn it down a few times because it got to be too loud. But I would turn out the it was like in the evening whenever I was playing the Call of Duty, and then the whites on here were very vibrant and white, and then the darks were very dark. So it was just an awesome experience of playing this or playing games on this TV here. So if you're wondering if the gaming experience on this TV is worth it, it, it surely is. I mean, you can tell a huge difference between playing on a QLED TV than playing on uh, maybe like a 4K or a uh, just a regular, you know, smart TV like that. Now, seeing is believing, um, and it's going to be kind of hard to, to show you the exact specifics, but I'm going to show you uh, gaming on this TV here. So I'm going to be putting in some footage of where I was playing some Call of Duty on this TV. So that way you can kind of get a, a visual of what it was like. Uh, let's go ahead and put in that footage now. Now, hopefully you was able to tell uh, how well this TV does with some of those gamings to the different, um, like, like the refresh rates of moving from side to side or the gun and the fast action pace that's in the game. You can see how well it performs with that. Um, you can see that some of the visuals and some of the whites and the darks and how vibrant they are and how deep the darks are. So I think you can tell just how awesome gaming is. Now, if you are looking into some more of the specifics of this TV, I'll go ahead and put in some of my review footage for that, right? Um, so that way you can see some of the exact details of what this thing has to offer and what it can do. So I'll go ahead and put in the review portion of this TV right here. This is a 65 inch TV that I just got and I've had for a little bit of time now. And I wanted to give my review on it after owning it and using it and putting it to uh, quite a few hours of use with my kids and my family of watching TV and to give my feedback and see if this is maybe 
a TV that you're interested in purchasing. And hopefully you can base that off of some of my opinions on being an honest, normal, average consumer of buying a television. Now, I don't work for Samsung. I don't, uh, I'm not affiliated with them by any means. So what I'm telling you is all my honest opinion of owning this thing for a little bit of time now. So what I'll do is I'll talk about what I've learned from it, and then I'll talk about more of the in-depth specifics on this TV later on in the video. But as far as owning it for a few weeks now, um, it's been a great TV. The picture quality is awesome. I mean, like, really awesome. So I upgraded from a uh, 4K UHD TV to this QLED 4K uh, UHD TV. Also, it's just bigger. I had a, a 55 inch, and I went bigger to 65, so... I think a lot of times whenever we upgrade our televisions, we usually end up going bigger. Um, but that's what I did. And I got to tell you, the picture on this, beautiful. It's just awesome. Uh, the other day I was watching Endgame on it and the clarity was so clear. It was almost like they were right there and I could reach in there and touch them. That's how the clarity is on this. So like right now, I've got a background image on here. This is kind of like their um, screensavers that they have. Samsung has built in a ton of different kinds of screensavers that you can put on there. So instead of just having like a black picture, uh, whenever you're not watching TV, you can have something that's pretty to, to look at just like this. And it stays on there for quite a quite a long time. Now, one of the main reasons that I went with the QLED when I was shopping around for televisions, because I had it boiled down to two TVs. I was either going to get the Samsung uh, QLED or I was going to get the LG OLED display, because I think that's what TVs are going to be going to in the future. So I wanted to make sure that I buy a TV that's going to last a while and it's going to be kind of future proof because how often do you buy TVs for your, your main living room is, you know, every so many years. So I wanted to make sure that I got one that's going to last a while and it's going to be something that's going to be, um, you know, a good TV for years to come. But the reason that I went with this one, the QLED, was because when it comes to OLED and QLED, if you are in a room that has a lot of natural light, like for this room, for example, I've got a lot of windows over here. There's a couple windows over here. There's a glare that'll be on the TV. The Samsung QLED is better when it comes to glares on a TV than they are with OLED. So that was one of the big reasons that I went with this TV. Um, also, I am a fan of Samsung. Um, I've had them, I've had a few TVs of theirs, and they've always lasted a long time. Versus somebody who maybe had a Vizio or something like that. I had a buddy who had a Vizio and it lasted like a year and it broke on him. My Samsungs have always lasted quite a long time. So they're a trusted brand. Um, they're at the top, you know, they're right there with uh, Sony and LG. And so buying a Samsung QLED was a, something that I was pretty confident in it lasting for years to come. Now, let me talk about some of the specifics of actually using this thing for a little while. This has what's called Bixby built into it, okay? And anybody who has a, a Samsung device, they're pretty familiar with what Bixby is. But if you're not, Bixby is kind of like Samsung's Siri, like Apple Siri, or um, it's kind of like their Amazon Alexa, okay? It has Bixby built in it. So you can talk to this TV and turn it on with the Bixby command. You just say hey, Bixby. But let me tell you, it's not that good yet, okay? Samsung has some work to do with that. Um, I would have to say that Amazon's Alexa is the leader in the industry when it comes to artificial intelligence and talking with voice commands. Um, my Siri works pretty good on my phone. It'd be not as good as Alexa, but these guys are last in line. I don't know. For some reason, it, it doesn't uh, understand my voice very well. I sometimes got to yell it. But it does have that capability to have that voice command in your TV, so... Talk about living in the future. We're like in the Jetsons age or Back to the Future too. if you're a fan of those movies like I am. Now, the other thing that I experienced that was kind of a con is that there was a time that I turned off the TV completely and I was in the kitchen area and I was kind of cleaning and then all of a sudden the TV just came back on. How creepy is that? Um, but I'm sure it was because of that Bixby built in there that it turned it on. So it's almost like having Poltergeist TV inside your house. So that was kind of weird. Um, it's only done that twice to me. Um, in, in the middle of the night, the TV came out one time. So in the good length of time that we've owned this TV, that's happened. So that's a that's the con on it. But the pros outweigh the cons on this TV. It is such a great TV. The clarity, the picture on it is just amazing. So let's let's take a look at it a little bit. So the remote on this thing looks like this. Okay, so it's a pretty narrow remote. 
Uh, there's not a whole lot of buttons on there, so it's not real daunting. Sometimes you can get a remote that's got so many different buttons on there that you don't really know what to do with. But this is what it, the remote looks like, and it? it's kind of shaped like this. So it's almost a, a little bit narrow to lose into your couch or your recliner, but keep an eye on this bad boy. Now, the great thing with this, it is a smart TV, so it does have its own smart capabilities that are built right into the TV. You don't have to go out and buy an external stick to put in there, another like a Roku device or, or a Fire Stick or anything like that. Samsung has that their own smart technology built into the TV. So when you hit the home button, just like this, it brings up all the different options of apps that you can download on there. And with this being one of the newest TVs on the market, one of the best TVs on the market, it's got every app that you can pretty much think of. Um, so it's got even Apple TV, which sometimes can be, sometimes it's not available on all TVs, but this has Apple TV. It's got your Disney Plus, your Hulu, your Netflix, which are built in. And it also on the remote, it's actually got Netflix uh, right here. It's got Prime Video and Hulu as sh quick shortcuts that you can press and it'll automatically launch those apps. And along with having all the different apps that you can download, it does have its own like TV platform. So, um, We'll go look right here, this little icon. So right there's Disney Plus, Spectrum. That little icon there is kind of like their own built-in platform. And it's got three movies on there also. It's got movies that you can buy. I haven't used it too much because I've always just used our Netflix or our Disney Plus. But it does have that capability in case you buy it and you don't have a subscription to Netflix, Hulu, or any of the other ones. You can watch free movies on their built-in platform. And like I mentioned previously in the video, it's got its Andium mode, so it's got all these different options to uh, select different uh, screensavers on there. So we'll go to the ambient mode screen on this right now. Okay, so it's loading, and then on here on the bottom, it's got different kinds of uh, features. It's got like my album, so maybe you, if you want to upload your own pictures to the Samsung platform, you could have your own pictures displayed on here. Um, it's got like artwork, it's got like different kinds of uh, uh, contemporary type of artwork. So it's got so many different features on there, but I kind of like the landscape view. So I've kept that on there for a little while. Every once in a while, I'll change it up. And if you are in the whole Smart Things platform with the Samsung, it is built right into this TV to where you can control some of your other devices that are in that Smart Things hub. So that's kind of a neat little feature that you're able to access it right here on your remote through there. So another way is you could always just dive into your phone, download the Smart Things app, and do it that way also. So uh, it gives you so many different uh, ways of being able to access your content, and they do it very easily. All right, so for example, right here, this is the end game. Um, I wish you guys could really see the clarity of this screen here. It's kind of hard to tell from a uh, recording on, on it like this, but... Um, it's got excellent quality and the sound is pretty good for just being the built-in speakers on a TV. I know a lot of people will get sound bars uh, to put at the bottom of their TV or mount them. It has pretty good sound for just being the standalone speakers that are built in. Another great feature with this TV is the bezel that goes all the way around the TV right here. It's really thin. So um, most of what you see is just green. There's not a whole lot of plastic that you see along the edges. Uh, now this is a 65 inch TV. That's what's advertised at, but I want to put a tape measure on it. So that way you guys can see exactly what the exact measurement is of screen real estate that you get. So whenever they say uh, the inches of a TV, you always measure from angle to angle like that. You don't measure across or down. So we're going to put a tape measure on this and see what it measures out to be. All right, so got a tape measure here. Let's measure it. Okay, so the actual measurement comes to be about 65 and 3 eighths. So that's, uh, they actually give you 3 eighths of an inch extra. So that's pretty good. That's what that measures, the actual measurement of screen real estate on this TV. Now, so that's some of the specifics of being an honest user. Uh, probably a lot of people who are going to watch this video are um, not really ones that need to dive so much into the technical part of the television. They just want to know some of the, the you know main user specifics. So that's what I've experienced so far. For watching this video, guys, this gaming review of this TV here. Hopefully it was helpful to you. If it was, go ahead and throw a thumbs up on this video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I make tech videos all the time and I'd love to have you back on the next one.